Let's talk about the other side of SharePoint and Power Apps working together, and that is Power Apps making SharePoint better by customizing your list forms. So in this video, we're gonna walk through how to customize your SharePoint list form so the SharePoint experience is different and using Power Apps instead of talking about building an individual app. Sound like fun? Now let's just switch over to my desktop and take a look. Over here, we've just got Old Faithful, right? Our employees SharePoint list, nothing too unusual about it. And so obviously we know if we go in here, like we click on Greg, the truck driver, we just get the regular old SharePoint experience to edit work with these fields. Yeah, it works fine, but sometimes you want a little more pizzazz. You want to look nicer, you want to be more interesting, maybe you need more advanced functionality, maybe you need something else to happen when they do it. Then this is a great place to introduce Power Apps to customize your SharePoint form. So if you have design rights or greater on the SharePoint list, if you look up here in the top, you know, we'll drop down here, edit form. And so here you can say, customize with Power Apps. If you click this, this is going to take you over to a Power App. After a couple seconds, it's going to load. Now keep in mind that this is not creating a standalone Power App. This is not a Power App that you can just run in the Power Apps app or run in a browser. This Power App is only available to the SharePoint list that we are working on. Also, it's a weird little caveat, and we'll show you some of the challenges of this later, but you do not own this Power App. This is not yours, right? Shane, this is not your Power App. Instead, this is SharePoint's Power App that SharePoint is just giving you the rights to edit. So that's gonna come up in a few minutes as well when we start looking at some of the things you might wanna do, some of those questions you've got. But let's, let's cover the basics before we cover some of those negatives. So you can see that by doing this, it automatically created me a simple little app here, right? All the app really is, is a screen with a form control, right? They've named it SharePoint Form 1, but it's just a regular form control. Over here on the right, we've got the field. So like if I'm like, hey, you know, I don't want a higher date. I don't know why I always put on higher date, but get rid of it, right? We remove it. Boom, now they can't use higher date in this field. Oh, you know what? Note looks a little funky down there because it's a different field type. And boom, you know, so now we've got a little bit of a simplified experience here. Um, but as you can see, right, it was just a form. And over here, we can do the fields. If you're missing a field, like for example, I can see, I don't know, one of my fields, skills is missing. So say add a field and we go down here. This is just a form. So then there is skills, add it. And now it is down here at the bottom. And if we want to drag it up below last name, boom, now we moved it, right? So you can control this. Also, it is a form, so if you want to change it to a two-column layout, why not, right? Now you've kind of got that in there in a much more tight experience, okay? So let's not over-customize it to begin with. Let's just simply do it. Okay, now what you're going to do is you can just hit back to SharePoint over here. When you press back to SharePoint, it's going to say, hey, do you want to save and publish your changes? Well, you definitely want to save them, and you, want, you have to publish them to make them available. So let's go ahead and say save and publish. Now it's going to save it to Power App. It's going to publish it. It's going to close everything down and load us back over here into SharePoint. Okay, that's the nice thing about that button is it kind of did all that for us. Now, if we click on Truck Driver, look over here, notice that it's white this time because I've got my site in dark mode and so it's not the black. And if we go in here and say Edit All, we're going to start to see our experience. Now, looking here though, you notice maybe right away that Note is still here and the date is still here. Okay, so sometimes there's a little bit of lag between you're saving and publishing and when you get back over here. Sometimes you get here too fast, okay? So what I would do in this case is just refresh my browser and now if we go back into Greg, there you go. Now it's on the version we want, okay? This has gotten better, it happens faster, but just keep that in mind, you probably want to some like a little, little mental marker before you start troubleshooting challenges or anything and make sure like, hey, does this look right or do I need to give it another second and do another refresh? Your users, you know, as long as they're not using it right now while you're editing it, they're never going to have this challenge. This is really just a you, the maker, trying to see it experience. But look, now there's our data. If we say edit all, we've got all the fields, right? We can change Greg's favorite color to his actual favorite color, which is blue. We can say save. And just as you'd expect, it is updated. Okay? So there you go. It's most simple form. That was it, right? You press a button, say customize forms, and you're working. Now, in reality, the main reason that most people do this is they want to do more, right? They want to create a bigger, better, more interesting experience. So to get back over there now, we're just going to go to the integrate here. We're just going to go to Power Apps, and we can say Customize Forms, right? Another way to get there. So this will take us back over. 
Now let's talk about some of the things that you might be missing when you first get here. So now that it works, now you might need to have a little more astute eye. Like notice that there's no save or cancel or edit buttons over here. All right, but if we go to the SharePoint list, and I want you to open the SharePoint list in a separate tab. This is one of those pro tricks that we're going to use a couple different ways. So open that up. Okay, so I remember like when we clicked here, we've got this edit button that changes to save and cancel. All right, like where, how, what are these doing? So over here, if you look, those buttons don't show up. But what, the way that you get to them, it's kind of hidden over here on the left. They've made it less hidden than they used to, but it's still kind of hidden to me. It's if you click on SharePoint integration, this is the connection, right? Like it says, hey, I'm integrated to that employees list. Cool. If you hit this drop down, look here on cancel, on edit, on new, on save, on view. So when the user clicks those SharePoint buttons, because you're using SharePoint, SharePoint buttons over there, when they click on those, these are what fire. Like so if you look at on edit, all that really does, so when they hit the edit button over there, it does an edit form. This is important to know because you start saying, hey, every time they hit edit, I want to send an email to their boss telling them they're editing the SharePoint item. I don't know why you want to do that, right? But you could do that. So what would you do? First thing you would do is just like in any Power App, you go over here to data sources, add a data source. You could search for Outlook, Office 365 Outlook, Outlook. Right, so this will put Outlook into our app. And if you've never done email before, I'll put a link up there to the video that covers that. We're not going to cover that now. But now that we've got Outlook in here, now we just say, hey, edit form, and then send email v2, right? And then we'll say send it off to Chewy, because Chewy seems to be the one that's in charge around here, like that. And then say, Shane is editing. Yell at him. Close that. And boom, now it, every time that they do an edit, not only is it going to put the form into edit mode so they can do the edit, but it is going to send the email. So on edit, if you want to have it happen on new, on save, on view. Anyway, what I want you to understand is that once you get kind of familiar with like, this is the interface, all the things you know how to do in Power Apps, you can do from here, okay? Now, if we want to put that in the effect, right, test it, what I would probably do is take my form here, maybe make it a little smaller, I'm going to go down here. I'm going to say insert me a label and I'm going to put this down at the very bottom real small and I'm just going to type in V1, right? Because remember, one of the challenges that we have is of knowing if our changes have been propagated over there as we're in the testing phase, okay? Now, this time, speaking of testing, instead of saying back to SharePoint, we could, but I, will, I don't like all the loading, right? It's a lot of stuff I got to edit out of the video. It's a lot of wasting of your time when you're doing it at home. So what I want you to do is hit save over here and then hit publish, right? So just the same way you do with standalone apps, publish to SharePoint, guess what's now? Now I'm just switch to your other little tab. This is why we have this open. Do a refresh over here, click on Greg. Now what we're waiting on, right, is we're waiting on the little V1 to show up in this spot down here at the bottom. It's still not here, so we'll do another refresh. And look, this time when I clicked, it said, hey, I need to connect to both SharePoint and Outlook, right? We didn't have to do this when we just had SharePoint, but now we need to allow our Outlook connection just like we would in Power Apps. We'll say allow. This is a good indicator that now it's getting my data. All right, and so look, between seeing that and now we see the V1 down here, we feel pretty good, but we're going to test anyway. If I press the edit button, I'm going to just edit. Now in just a moment, uh, Chewy should get an email that says, hey, Shane is editing. So let me go check Chewy's email real quick. One sec. Look at that. To Chewy from Shane, yell at him, Shane is editing. Woohoo! Okay, so we know that our little bit of code is firing now, right? Remember, one of those things I always try to stress with people, fail fast, test often. And so now we know that functionality is working. And hopefully that gives you that whole idea that yes, Whatever you know how to do in Power Apps, you can come and do over here. You can add data sources, you can connect things, you can add a flow to this. We added Outlook, you'd add Teams. It doesn't matter. You can customize your SharePoint form any way that you want using Power Apps here. Let's talk about a couple of the peripheral, super, I don't know, one of those edge things. I was gonna use a fancy word and I tripped over it before I even got it out of my mouth. So never mind. Anyway, let's go at a couple of other things I wanna to talk to you about. So questions that I get a lot. Well, what if I wanna make this different sized? Okay, so you can go here to settings, you go to display. And so it's saying, hey, right now I'm using a portrait orientation and I'm using the large size. So there's small, large, custom. You could also change it and say, I want it to be landscape, apply this, and let's give that a go, right? So it's much wider in theory now. So we'll say close. Now, if we want to see that, what do we want to do? We want to, you know what I'm going to do? 
as well as I'm gonna go down here and change this to say V2 just to make sure that we're not, not confused, right? Like we wanna make sure we know we got the new one. So we'll say save, let's say publish, publish to SharePoint. That's a lot of clicking. All right, one sec. Now we'll switch back over here to SharePoint and we'll do our refresh again. Go into truck driver. Okay, now look, here it kind of half did it, right? I notice it says V1, it's wider, but it's still V1. This is why we did the whole V2 down there. We know it's not done yet. Let's try again. Let's try Greg again. It wants to allow again. There you go. So there's our V2 and there's our wider experience. Now, I want to be honest with you guys. Like, this is the best it's behaved for me in a while. I feel like every time that I go in here and I start messing with these display settings, like, it works great for some people. Some people, it gets a little wonky donkey. I don't know if it's about browser resolution or what it is, um, but sometimes it has challenges. I'm super excited. This worked. Every time I've demoed this for students recently, right, in my live training classes, this has not worked, but hey, it's working today. So good job, Power Apps. Um, and I always wonder if that's because I've got a 4K monitor instead of a, uh, you know, regular 1080 type of thing. So I don't know. Anyway, your mileage might vary, but that is how you start to customize it to make it take up more or less space. Other things that I want you to know, let's go back over here. So we talked about this whole SharePoint integration. Now, keeping up with that whole SharePoint integration, if we insert a label, I also want you to understand that one of the things that you have available to you, if you type in SharePoint integration, oh, you can do a dot, and so look, dot selected, that is the record that they have chosen. So if you need to know information, kind of how we do gallery dot selected, this is what item in the list is selected. So if you wanted to do something specific with the current user that they've got selected, right? Selected and then first name. Now, right now it's the same, that's Nicola, okay? So that would be a way that if you needed to reference it, SharePoint integration dot select is the record, then just do the field, the first name, the last name, the department, the age, all the things you know how to do. You just need to know that SharePoint integration select is how you know what record they're currently looking at. Okay. Now, we also talked a little bit about there's some of those things that you can't do. So for example, if we come over here, what if I say, hey, I want to take and share this, right? So let's click on share. Takes us over here, but look, no permission to SharePoint format, blah, 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 blah. Okay, remember I told you who owns this app? SharePoint owns this app. So what happens is Power Apps and SharePoint work together to give anyone access. Anyone who has access to the SharePoint list has access to this particular app. You can't change that. You can't lock people out of this or take away their access, right? So you're not managing security. If they have access to the list, they have access to this form. So keep that in mind. You do not control the security in any way. You can't do anything with it, okay? There, there's also like, you can't take this app, like you can't say, hey, I wanna use this, I built this great custom form, I wanna use it on 12 copies of this list. It doesn't work that way. You'd have to go and customize all 12 of those, right? These are not standalone apps. These are little apps that, are, that SharePoint owns that are tied to the SharePoint list they came with. You can't, they're not portable in any way is really what I'm trying to say, right? Like you can't, do these and move them around. You're not gonna do uh, ALM, Application Lifecycle Management with them, any of that type of stuff. This app belongs to the list, right? It's the same like if I went over here like, and I said, hey, take me to all my apps, like notice that that app is not going to show up over here. I can't get to it from here because it's not my app to see. Even if I said shared with me, I'm still not going to see it because it's not mine to see. I can't edit it from this experience. Or, if we kind of thought, well, what about if we go back here to share? Let's go to share. Let's try to be tricky. Let's see if we can confuse it, right? So we know we can't do that. Well, what if I go and grab this web link, right? What if we copy this? Let's copy this direct link to the app. What is it going to do? Copy, paste this in. Interesting. So this does let you get to it directly. I would have told you this wasn't going to work. I guess I would have been wrong, but I feel like this is probably more of a bug that <laughs> this is working. It's not meant to be directly accessed. If you want to build a standalone app that they're not running in the SharePoint browser, then go over to your Power App and over here, right, and create an app from this experience, right? So if you want the app to run outside of SharePoint, create it this way. If you want it to run inside of SharePoint, create it the way we just learned in this video. The last little point I'm going to leave you with here is as you're thinking about this, right, this works great for this very simple example what I've shown you, right, a custom form. The more complicated you make this app that runs inside SharePoint, the more likely things are gonna go bad. I've seen people try to make like 20 screen apps that run as a custom form like this. Technically they did it, 
but they had a lot of stability, weirdness issues, things like that. Don't over engineer this. If you want a comp big complicated app, go build it the other way and then have them reference the app directly, right? So keep that in mind. The last little, I'm gonna show you one more thing I decided, right? So the other thing that we sometimes do, what if you want to keep the user, like the whole idea was like, you want an app that stops them from editing this data, right? So remember that like, there's nothing stopping you from coming over here and being like, all right, control A, delete all this stuff, right? Get rid of the form. Right? I can get rid of the form. I'm just gonna, I'll get rid of the name here. I'm just gonna put v, um, a label up here and we're gonna change this text to say, go away, right? And so what are we gonna do? Now we're gonna take this, we're gonna save it and publish it. All right, right, publish it off. And now that it's published, as soon as that updates over here, we'll refresh. So look, now it just says go away. So we've used this before to lock down lists. So even though the user has access to it, now when they click to edit all, they just get a go away message. They cancel, they save, it doesn't matter, they can't do anything, right? Because we deleted all the pieces. And so if you're gonna do that, like you need to lock this down further, right? You need to go in here, and take away, you know, the edit sheet mode and all that stuff, right? Like, I'm not getting into that right now, but just keep that in mind is that this form can be whatever you want to be. Now, if you're like, okay, Shane, I did that, but now I really just want to go back to the regular experience. Fair enough. Back over here in SharePoint, you can go here to list settings. And then under form settings, I can do a couple of things. I can either just set it back to the default form, right? So go back to the SharePoint experience and keep my custom form or I'd probably at this point then say delete my custom form because I just want it to completely go away, right? So delete it. And now my custom form, like it's, it's like I never did any of that, right? If we go back in here, I would be starting over from square one. So if you really screw up, this is your out for that. Questions, comments, leave them below. Anything I can do to help, let us know, right? We do this for customers all the time over here at Power Apps 911. We've got training classes that teach this stuff. We got you know, the live classes, the on-demand classes. I got Power Platform University where you can spend six months with me learning. I know, so great. Or we can do mentoring, we can do help, we can do uh, just get on a Teams call with you and fix your app real quick and never talk to you again. Whatever works for you, okay? And with that, I'm gonna say thanks and have a great day.